animals. Yeah, quite difficult subject, not kittens, animals in general. And if you don't want the fur on your painting looks like a straw, if you don't know which part of an animal to paint the first, which parts to define and which keep loose, and also, you know, especially when you are a beginner, you want to know everything. You want to know what is the best brush in the world. You want to know about pigments. You think that you should keep in mind everything and everything and paint every single detail, display what you see on a photograph and just keep so much pressure on that to keep in mind all of this stuff so today I'm going to talk about way about this and the first tip is you shouldn't actually um, especially for today's subject you shouldn't have all the art materials in the world have the best brush in the world you have one brush and this is enough you have um, the basic watercolor, water soluble paints, even gouache works well with enough water. And you can start with it and have the main general thing about what you're going to paint and pin on it, it, pin it, and then develop the other painting. So first think about what you're going to paint what is important, what is the main general focus on your painting. And don't think hard on all the other stuff about materials, about um, how to capture every single details. And today I'm going to talk about that. And also, for example, for animals. For animals, it's important to, it's all about eyes, right? So this actually is the main focal point when you paint. And I have many courses where I showed how to paint eyes, so I don't spend much time today on how to paint eyes. Today, um, when you capture eyes, when you exercise, and get it, eyes are here, what, looking at you. If you still have something wrong and something, no, I just don't get it. I will talk about and give you tips on that, how to check up yourself, how to correct something and how to have a guideline behind the painting to continue to develop your painting or correct something by the way. So I'm going to talk about that. And this stream isn't about, there are many questions from artists all over the world how to capture the surrounding area of an animal so it don't look detached. So I, I don't talk about that on this stream because I already have many tutorials in this season since spring season to launch it and we have many tutorials inside my online courses talking about that how to capture surrounding areas so I skip on that and focus on uh, what you know usually I hold free demo local during art shows events but this year is it's funny year actually and we haven't we haven't any festivals and art shows this year and i didn't hold hold live in person workshops also so i thought it's a wonderful opportunity to give it away online and to show how i paint and introduce the style i'm painting because i know there are many artists who have this feeling like you want to be free you get stuck with following all of those rules, color charts, uh, how to be right and, you know, creating and following the border, the curve and afraid to ruin it 
and go outside. So it's a wonderful possibility for me to introduce the style I'm painting. I paint loose. I don't use pencil or sketch. And yes, I do have a guideline, a formula. And actually, let's start painting. And let's talk about materials. Today I'm gonna to use my artist kit. This is my paint box, my general brush, my laser brush for tiny details. Maybe I will need a magic eraser and I will give you a tip or two how to use it not only for erasing something, correcting, but how to use it on a painting. And, and the subject is on my previous uh, workshop with my students I promised raccoon. We saw raccoon um, on our backyard and you know what? We saw raccoons, there are many, it was seven of them. We were so excited, it was late night, even if it was late night, I took my camera and captured the darkness only flashing eyes were seen and noises. We now we counted seven, but who knows? Maybe there are even more, and they hanging out on a bird feeder. And also this animal. When if somebody asks me, oh, what animal associates with the Canada? I think raccoons their tail, their mask face and I wanted to show you in this demonstration how to paint this funny subject. Uh, this here is very special for me personally and I'm happy to be Belarus Canadian and in this stream I'm going to show you how to paint a raccoon, Canadian raccoon. the eyes and if you if I look at the at this photograph I might draw kind of line and it helps me a lot because when I'm going to paint I I draw this imaginary line on a paper and this line will guide me how my painting going to develop And then, if I look at the photograph and connect edges, I achieve kind of square. I know it takes time. By exercising with composition, you gradually exercise your mind and you start to see shapes behind complicated subject. You start to simplify it. And this is why I talk about that because this is so important and it it's so much easier and simpler to paint once you establish this skill to simplify and to see the general simple shapes behind complicated subjects. And here they have this triangle. I think how to place it here also. So I have this. Maybe like this. I know here will be the upper corner, here will be another and somewhere in the bottom will be the bottom edge, like that. So I already can see that somewhere here will be a head. Somewhere So I bring a pigment on my brush and start to capture the shape of an eye. Funny and cute expression. I'm smiling painting this. I love, I absolutely love animals. 
And when people ask me how I capture the personality, how I do that, maybe this is the answer. I love animals and this is the key. If you paint what you adore, if you enjoy the process, everything so I reserved kind of blinks and I took another brush my general brush filled with water and with water I fill all other gaps white gaps like that Maybe I go around an eye already. And I'm going to move my brush in a way the fur grow. If I explore the photograph, I see those lines. So I move my brush in the same way, just to start, like that. Here also. Maybe there. And with wet brush filled with water, what I can do. I can have fun with it. I can come alive those spots of dark pigment on the paper. And this is why I love a watercolor, because only watercolor create those flows. Especially for fur illusion. I'm not going to develop every single hair like botanical artists, for example. This is enough. You saw, I applied just two brush strokes in the bottom and upper. And this is it. And this is the simplicity of this medium. And the more I paint, the more I learn to stop in the process and don't continue to, you know, keep adding details. This is wonderful possibility to paint a few strokes, just a few I see beginners get involved into this and paint every single whisker, every single hair, okay, and maybe softer. I soften this edge and think later how to develop the other part. Right now I want to save and reserve. Actually, here I can continue to develop and use these blacks. Yeah, maybe I, I show you that. I want to wet because I want the wet on wet technique, how colors dry on a wet surface. It's different. And let's think about the nose. The other eye will be somewhere here. And a nose somewhere there. Then I move down, maybe here. So this is a hint for me, okay? So I have this white surface and what watercolor does. And another thing, do you see those whiskers? I can resolve them with white wax crayon. It could be a candle or masking fluid. I use simple from school kit white crayon, wax crayon, and I can reserve it already. So somewhere here, a few whiskers. Let's see how it works. And I continue to develop draw area where I want the black. And here, and there. Good. Okay, now I need extremely rich blacks for that.
and paint with I don't paint this is placement of color I want this black to flow and I see how how much I needed it and connect with the eye because when you draw kind of like this yes you can do that but I prefer the medium to paint for me I feel like I'm not alone and I have a friend and we paint and create them together so my part I try to optimize and apply less and give the medium the room to paint for me so kind of like this <laughs> oh it's so dark good so I correct this shape and maybe another tip what if I turn a painting and let this pigment to travel in this wet area you know sometimes pigment active and brown and sometimes it's not it depends on room temperature on it depends so each time you paint you adapt and see and then I go here a few hairs for realistic look and as you can see wax doesn't work what I can do with that I can took a, a dry brush and try to and for another eye I want something different maybe add warmth Maybe add some orange and mix them together. Change something for interesting illusions and in life. Also, you can see many colors playing. The other eye actually on this, on this photograph is a little bit lower and smaller this is how our brain knows the angle of an animal but it's complicated stuff the simplest thing is think about this line and follow it check up yourself the upper edge and the lower edge okay and distance also if this is the center the same space will be this will be the inner corner yes a hint for you if you're not confident like I am right now I'm not confident I'm searching where to place this eye create those little points like that little little points but you should be strong in proportions and check if this eye another eye on the one line okay and the upper edge also you check out this okay and blicks somewhere here blicks and another beautiful blick here kind of like that maybe paint directly with orange 
because it's going to be mixing. Okay, I clear my brush and with water I fill the other areas. So I'm checking. Paint the fur around. See it? Once I see someone's watching at me, my mood changes. I feel connection. I'm connected with my peace. And this is the most wonderful feeling in the world while creating. You are not alone since this moment. And everything is possible to paint in this medium. Even if this painting went to the beam. So during the day, when you finish your session, you will have something in the corner of your smile. And this is why I love to share the style I'm painting and how to paint with this freedom. Not afraid to bring something in it. How to turn mistakes into your own style that and let's do the same thing for this Another thing which gives me freedom and permission for mistakes is that I saw him, I saw them, I saw records in the dark. So how, how it's possible to see the details and all this stuff? So each time you paint, even if you paint from the photograph, follow your own experience what you saw, what you felt about your subject and use the photograph just for general parts just to know where the nose will be and stuff and make it personal okay, the nose like that let it flow and even more, I'm going to paint using uh, this dot. So again, I call this technique guided flow. I the contrast, which we talk, which is the topic of this live stream. We talk about the contrast, light against darks, and I can reserve it. See, I can reserve it just with white paper. But in other pigments, what you think? I have Lumi Pink in my paint box. Just a little bit. Play with colors. I like how this Lumi pop up against this dark pigment. It's fun. Maybe yellow for warmth also let's see what effect I can achieve with this wax crayon
when you paint and feel pressure, forgot to breathe. I know this feeling. I was there when I was a beginner. I had so much stress on how to be right. And I learned that on a perfect star, your mistakes, this is what makes a painting alive, unique, and most of all, interesting, intriguing. So as time goes by and I keep painting, I learn to celebrate, invite, be open for mistakes. As you can see here, as my paper, I forgot to tell, my paper, I don't uh, paint on flat surface. Here, colors naturally flow from upside down because my easel at an angle. And here at the bottom, naturally, you can see the concentration of pigment. And right now I'm going to use it to paint you can use. And how to adopt during the painting when you... You know, it's so beneficial to see um, So this is the lowest edge somewhere. If I draw a line, yes, if I draw a straight line, it will be underneath this eye, see it? So here will be the leg. Here will be the leg. And another Remember about rectangular. So somewhere here will be the leg. Yeah? Kind of here. Right? Another thing. Do you see this line of fluffy fur, how it grows? Kind of arc underneath. So here I'm going to follow this arc. This is for you. I showed you how I'm going to develop this painting so you understand how I use the water flow for fur illusions kind of like this while I was talking this dot almost dry it's still warm here in Ontario in September so I help it and place a little bit of pigment okay and I wet this brush with clear water very very well I want you to see how it glow even more and more and more I love this lazy wonder brush because it holds so much water and pigment and it's so soft so somewhere here as I showed you during this according to this line I connect this I make step back and look how it gonna to flow I can turn my painting and guide this flow. Why I do that? Why I do this so complicated? Why I think about this behind the stage? Why I talk about this line? Because of this. Here you can achieve wonderful illusion of an arm, paw and don't paint it and it seems so effortless 
and everybody asks you how did you do that how you achieved this you're such a master of a flow and actually it's it's not so it's, a, it's not so hard to do that okay I have another arm and I need more pigment okay more pigment okay more pigment where is the pigment I can add a pigment here it stays don't want it to flow okay I can add water on top like this turn my painting I remember about this line I painted for you in purpose to see how you can manage this This is what I wanted to show you, how you can manage it on, on painting. Maybe go bolder, more confident flow like this. Let's play, let's see how how it gonna to maybe turn the painting like that and I forgot about the shapes right yes here I'm totally free but I keep in mind the shapes remember about the contrast this animal is a good example of contrast oh I love I love this spontaneous brush stroke I can turn this into uh, what in so let me know in the chat are you ready to continue or you you get stuck on that this is enough like let me know You can sit you can sit here all night good still with me good thank you for joining me I feel like you get it you get it what I talk about and ex another thing fluffy technique let's apply it so if you have a bit of a salt on your kitchen wonderful idea later so i recommend you while you are paint because uh this is a live stream i have limited time today unfortunately i wish i paint all day long and all night long when you paint at home take your time and make make tea breaks and stop on each stage on each moment where you feel like wow that's something i'm, I'm mesmerized i get excited get inspired because when you develop a painting quietly not rush i already so much i already talk about it and in my online courses and i keep repeating about this It's so easy to overwork your painting and if you already painted and tried the watercolors learned some techniques and tried to capture some subject you know when you ending up overworking and I encourage you and recommend you to make breaks in order to not to overwork your piece to keep it simple seems so effortless and not miss a wonderful uh, effects which you can achieve as paper dries when you paint it's so easy to lose them forget about them and during the breaks you feel like all catched up and you have wonderful ideas which continuously come during the day and you choose which one is the best 
Okay, the next live stream will be about roses. It will be inside my online courses for my stu students after tomorrow. So, if you're a student and watching me, we will be back after tomorrow and paint roses. And if not, please follow the updates about my next painting afternoon. And if you're not a student, I give you an invitation. If you upload the photograph of the practice exercise of this raccoon in our Facebook group, I will send you the invitation to our workshop after tomorrow with my students. And if you want to learn and know more about fluffy cuties, if this is your topic, you animal lover, and you think how to paint your cat and thinking of in loose style of painting. From 2015 to 2020, let me show you the portrait, the Fargo dog multi subjects which one this one on the cover the tutorial let me show you the mood maker here I showed how to paint eyes Argo dog how I developed it and cats also What else we have? We have horses. How to paint them. Another fluffy cutie. This part is, I have many tutorials actually. Here on this one, I showed what to do with the final piece and how to, you know, frame it, save it, which materials to use, what to do with the painting when it's finished, how to frame it for interesting effects. For example, how to use hairbrush to paint hairs. This is a fur trapper tutorial. Wonderful! It was kept. I was held. I was held it live stream also, and it was such a moment when, uh, from some spot of pigment, you see how fur trapper appears. And I didn't expect introduce different brushes. Okay guys, so if you have any questions The artist kit is sold out. It was first limited edition and it's already sold out. And yeah, maybe maybe there will be a quick sale on Black Friday this year just follow the updates. But for now, no, I don't have my artist kit, my brushes, my paints, all go across the globe. And I'm so happy about that. So, yeah, and I forgot to tell, there will be grand opening of my online courses soon. Dates are ready and will be sent, sent soon. I'm just checking on them. It's such an easy thing to do, get lost in all of those materials. So I'm checking. And yeah. And be ready to register as soon as you get the invitation because the opening happens only twice a year in fall and in spring. So for, ne for the next season, season three, the opening will be in a few days.
okay and yeah in this session I showed you and demonstrating you how to paint animals give you some tips and tricks on a fur I'm glad that I said everything what I wanted according to the composition and how to check in yourself during the process while painting because sometimes it's uh, because of pressure it's hard to you know um, have this calm feeling like everything is fine you can make a break relax on some point because you have a guideline <laughs> Uh, and yeah, did, let me know in comments below do, did you enjoy this live stream what's your favorite tip what did you learn and yeah I applaud your practice exercising in a facebook group and I will see you after tomorrow or on my next painting afternoon so yeah, this was it. I hope you...